Good evening. Can you hear us? Bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Mark, Praise hope you've Lord. all had a great week. And all kept well. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, I'll start in prayer and then I'll read something that I tend to write down um, in my quiet times. I'm going to do something different this week, not read a scripture, but read what God has given me in the week. Amen. Amen. Father, we just lift up this evening to you and we just thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for all your saints around the world. Father, we thank you for our families. We thank you for our lives. We thank you, Lord, for your love, the greatest gift that any mankind can receive. Father, we just thank you. We praise you. We bless the name of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And Father, we just ask that this evening, you bless the words that come forth and Lord that it will touch people's hearts that there'll be a renewing in their hearts. Lord, I pray for light bulbs to be coming on, ears to be opened and hearts to receive, that you be glorified in their lives. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now for some lovely poems. Well, I don't know about poems, but <laughs> the first thing that I do when I awake each new day is to say, hello God, this day I give to you. Hello God, take my hand and lead me in your ways with joy and laugh, love and laughter to pass to others on my way. I love you Lord, my heart wants to say, forever I will follow and remembering each new day just to say thank you for all you gave to me. Thank you, my dear father, you've been with me always. Thank you, Lord, those two words never seem to be enough. So I'm thankful you do know me. You know what's in my heart. A new life you have given to lead me on my way. Forever we will be together, each new, every day. Thank you, Lord, for all you've given. Thank you, Lord, my guide, my love, my hope, my protector, provider, all along my way. Throughout life's journey, you will always be with me. Thank you, Lord, my father, my heart does cry and say, I love you, Lord, forever, and hello to you this day. Amen. You're upside down, Margaret. Where you gone? <laughs> yeah, Tony's having a round of <laughs> you, you, Have you moved to Australia? Uh, <laughs> you moved you. to Australia, haven't you? Oh, bless you, bless you. Well, you it's a new gymnastics. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Hang on, where are you gone? Bless you. <laughs> Uh, when I look back at the... <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, darlings. Uh, Hello. It's Natasha. God bless yeah, you. Yeah, she's got her right now. Oh, bless yeah, you. right. <laughs> together. Okay, it's another prayer. When I look back at the prayers I've said, oh, Lord, how many requests I've made to see your hand upon the lives of those I love whom you have chose. I pray each day for each one you've gave. My job, my Lord, is to undertake the love you have for each you gave. I pray, my Lord, that they will be one day, Lord, just like me, who will walk with you and will pray to know your love along their way. I can see your hand coming through, their lives changing, walking towards you. Your promise, Lord, is that you will choose and call them, Lord, to walk with you. Amen. Amen. My Father, God, my Lord, whatever this world throws at me, never let me go. Let me always be held by thee. Let my love grow deeper as my heart is set on you. Never let me walk away. Keep my eyes set upon you. 
My heart does cry with joy, my Lord, to know I'm yours and you are mine. Is it selfish to say that I could ignore such a love no one can hold? Except when you, Lord, it's your hands that I hold. You have my heart, my soul. I'm yours, my Lord, forever. Let my walk with you unfold. Never let me disappoint. My wish is to command and do whatever that you wish. I want to please the Father in all that I do. So help me, Lord, I pray. Show me what to do. Although I'm flesh and in this world, I know I, I am of above. My destiny and heaven, this promise you've been, I've been given from my Father, my love. The one who sits in heaven is where I'm heading for. Then I know my heart and life will be complete in his love above. I think that do for now. No, another one. I like that's it. it. That's it. That's it for now. <laughs> oh, Amen. bless you, darling. Thank you. Yeah, okay, so. Yeah, you know what? Denny gets up really early and um, she spends time with the Lord and, you know, it just flows from it. I've flows got, from her pen. I've got book loads. I've She's written. got book loads. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. So, uh, yeah, now we come to that time when we're going to do our confessions of faith. Okay. And, um, yeah, so let the demons start to flee now as we're going to start confessing these things to you, my Lord. Amen. So um, we're going to start with we will never falter because we lie upon God's holy altar. Amen. We, we will, will never falter, falter because we lie upon God's, God's holy altar. altar. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I want to see your lips moving while we're doing this. <laughs> we need to be confessing this out loud shout it out i think it's a bit difficult for the one on the box yeah the doggy <laughs> that's different <laughs> hello doggy help me <laughs> oh. okay we will never suffer loss because our faith is in his cross Amen. we, we will, will never suffer loss because our faith, faith is in, in his, his cross. cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And our life is never sour because we've got resurrection power. Our, our life, life is, is never sour, sour because we've got resurrection power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. And our steps are always sound as we stand on holy ground. Amen. Our, our steps, steps are always sound, sound as, as we, we stand, stand on holy ground. ground. Praise Amen. you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, uh, I love this one. Don't tell me you're going to. <laughs> no. <laughs> No longer are we dire as we're refined by his fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no longer are we dire because we're refined in his fire. Lord, we just thank you that we are, have been baptized in your spirit and your fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it refines us. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. And we are delivered from all sin because we were crucified with him. Yep. Yeah. So, so we, we are, are delivered, delivered from all sin because we were crucified with him. Praise you, Lord. And there's no longer any strife because we've got resurrection life. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's no, no longer any strife because we've got resurrection life. Hallelujah. 
Yes, Lord, I thank you that we are crucified with you, buried with you, that we died with you, and we were resurrected with you, Lord. And we walk in that resurrection power that works in us. Hallelujah. And we no longer live with dross because he's nailed it to the cross. Mm. We no, no longer live with dross because he's nailed it to the, the cross. cross. Yes, all our old life, all the natural things that we got from Adam, they're nailed to the cross, hallelujah. Yes. And we don't need to live with that stuff anymore because we're new creations. Wow. And our conscience won't offend as by his blood we are cleansed. Mm. Our conscience, conscience won't offend, offend as by his blood we are cleansed. cleansed. Hallelujah. Thank and I thank you, Lord, that, um, yeah, if, if we stumble and sin, Lord, mm. that we call upon your blood to cleanse us, Lord, and you pick us up and you clean our conscience. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That by your blood, Lord, which has power to mm. cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And once we were depraved, but by Christ's love, we've been saved. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Once, once we I were depraved, depraved, but by I Christ's love, I we've saved. been saved. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all of these things, Lord, because mm. you've provided them for us. And we walk in them, Lord. And when we walk, and the things that you provide us, then we can walk in victory, mm. in your victory. Thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Son. Thank you, Lord. So right now, I think, um, Rami, uh, let us go into another song, and then I'll come back and we'll start our message. Bless you. Hallelujah. Yeah, Lord, you are the only one who satisfies our soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is no other. I mean, I remember when I was looking at all the religions trying to find spiritual truth. And you know what? There was nothing that I found that ever satisfied my soul. Amen. Nothing. They interested my intellect and they sounded good. But you know what? There was something always missing until the day I met Jesus. Hallelujah. And that just changed everything. And I thank you, Lord, that all of us today, that we've all met Jesus and we've been changed by him. Amen. Oh, praise you, Lord. So today my message is, um, is uh, something that, you know what, I keep on coming back to it from time to time because I feel there is a need for it. And it's all about living at a higher spiritual level than we are now you know what there are spiritual levels and there are people who have been able to live at higher spiritual levels you know the bible talks about us being um taken from glory to glory it is an upward sort of process and um and today I want to talk about um, one of the heroes of the faith who walked in that elevated area and wrote books about it to help others come to that place where he was. Hallelujah. And I'm not saying that I'm in that place myself, but it's a place that I want to be. And the person I'm going to talk about is... A gentleman called Watchman Nee. Raise your hand if you've heard of Watchman Nee. You've heard of Watchman Nee. If you haven't, I'm going to tell you a little bit about him because this guy was one of the great men of God. And um, he was a Chinese gentleman, but you know what? His teaching has resonated all over the world. 
and has changed Christianity for the better. Um, he's no longer alive. He was martyred in 1972. But I'm going to tell you a little bit about his life. Then I'm going to go on and, and, and talk about some of those levels that he talks about. Okay, so Watchman Nee was a Chinese guy. He was, um, uh, he lived around Shanghai and um, he uh, was born in 1903. So um, he got converted at the age of 17 after an evangelical meeting that somebody dragged him to. And uh, uh, he had, after that, he had an encounter with Jesus in his bedroom. And he said, light flooded the room. So he had a dramatic conversion. And he was led to link up with a missionary lady, an independent missionary, which was quite unusual in China. They tended to be um, uh, <clears throat> run by denominations. But this lady, Margaret Barber, um, you know, lived by faith and um, lived by donations and things like that. So, um, but you know what, she was a, a lady of real faith. And um, she was inspired by the Welsh Revival and by things like the Keswick Convention and what had happened in Azusa Street. So she was looking at people like Evan Roberts and Andrew Murray, you know, those other great people of the faith. Those were the people that influenced her. And of course, through her, they were able to influence the young watchman Nee. And when this lady died in 1930, Watchman Nee wrote of her that she had the kind of fellowship, he said, he said the kind of fellowship she had with the Lord and the kind of faithfulness she expressed to the Lord are rarely found on this earth. So she had a very close relationship with the Lord. And you know what? She taught Watchman Nee to have that close relationship. And she taught him all about faith. And Watchman Nee said of himself, he said, my Christian life took a big turn from doctrine and knowledge to a living person that is Christ, who is God's centrality and God's universality hallelujah so he knew Christ intimately now Watchman Nee he was a publisher of Christian magazines he was a writer of books and um, he established churches as well throughout China and um, in places like Malaysia and Singapore so he traveled wide, widely. Um, and, you know, one of his things was that God wanted to work through the local church, through the body of Christ in the local church. He says that's God's place for evangelism, for training, for teaching, for raising people up, for changing the area that that church is in, for bringing people unto the Lord. About his writing, he said that he wanted it that the reader will, as a new creation, give himself wholly to God and become a useful person in his hands. Hallelujah. Amen. He wanted to raise people up so that they could be useful to God and not just part of a congregation or, you know, sitting at home. So um, he was very active in the training of people. Um, he also did a lot of conferences and meetings that he, that he called for the overcomers. He wanted to treat, uh, to raise people up, to be victorious overcomers, not just in his local church, but in all the places that he preached. 
and his preaching went throughout China. And you know what? The things that are happening in China today are still happening because of the things that he input into that place. Hallelujah. Yeah. Even though the authorities are trying to, um, to curtail all Christian activity in nasty ways, those things that he sowed, those seeds, are still growing today. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, the local church was a big focus for him. The body of Christ that he wants to be built up by the glory of God so that it could be presented to Jesus, that Jesus could, it could be presented to Jesus as a, uh, a body without spot or blemish. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And those are the things that I still, I still think that we need to be looking at and thinking about today. The body of Christ. And then another thing that he was very passionate about was training youth. He saw the youth, that it was an investment in the next generation. And we need to be looking at that today because what we sow into the young today will, you know, ensure the future growth of the kingdom of God in the world. So in 1938, he did a, a, a tour of Europe and he preached all around Europe, preaching and teaching. And you know what? Um, again, his influence is, is fundamental uh, to, to um, a lot of the good things that we see in the church today. Hallelujah. Uh, in 1948, he, um, he oversaw a revival in Shanghai. Um, his church there had over a thousand members and um, praise God for that but then in 1949 the communists took over in China um, so that was done under Chairman Mao Chairman Mao Zedong and things got very difficult for Christians they clamped down on all the churches and um, with Watchman Nee being such a, a man of influence, uh, they caught up with him. And in 1952, he was imprisoned. He was put into a labor camp um, where he had to go undergo re-education, which was indoctrination, torture, terrible things. And he stayed in that prison until his death in 1972. So he spent 20 years in prison, but his faith never wavered. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And when he died, you know what? They wouldn't allow a funeral or anything. He was cremated, but his ashes, his family weren't allowed his ashes. He was treated terribly. But you know what? In all that time, he prayed for his prison guards. And he prayed for the ones that tortured him. And you know what? Some of those warders and some of those torturers came to know the Lord because of him. Because he put into action the things that he had learnt from the Lord. And this man walked very much like the Lord himself. And so he, walked, he wrote some very important books. And I'm going to mention three of them because they're quite well known really and you might have read them but um, the first one is the normal Christian which shows that normal Christians should live at a higher level than the level that we're pretty much used to to be quite honest and then there's another one called sit walk and stand which shows the stages of Christian development And if you haven't read them, I recommend them because they will just give you so much encouragement to move to a higher place, a higher level mm -hmm. in Christianity. Mm -hmm. And then the one I really want to talk about mm -hmm. is called The Spiritual Man. 
and it comes in three volumes and it was written in 1928. Mm. But you know what? It is a step-by-step -step guide to what we call walking in the spirit. Mm. Because unless we are truly walking in the spirit, you know, I'll be quite honest, I do it from time to time. I do it sporadically. It is not something that um, I'm doing continuously, even though I might try. Um, but, you know, we're, we're looking uh, at a place where, which is inhabited like, with people like Smith Wigglesworth. You know, that man has such an intimate relationship with God. But you know what? He had to give up everything to get it. And it's the same with Andrew Murray, who revolutionized, again, Christianity through his writings. He under um, he, he was in charge of a, a revival in South Africa that swept South Africa. Mm. People like Evan Roberts from the Welsh Revival. And you know what? All of these people looked at the apostles because this was the type of life they lived. A life of full surrender. And you know, I talked about full surrender before. But, you know, if we enter through this narrow gate, we can move to a higher level. So I recommend anyone here who wants to move to a higher level and see how it's done step by step would buy this book called the spiritual man you can get it on amazon it's not expensive but it uh, it just covers absolutely everything that you need to know and you know what i'm studying this book i'm rereading it i'm putting into action those things and and i'm looking forward to moving in, in forward in spiritual life hallelujah mm. so i'm going to speak a little bit more about it um one of the first things we need to do is consecrate our lives to God. And I'm sure we've all done that. It's setting aside our lives to God. It's when we take this faith seriously. And then there is a process of sanctification that is moving us deeper and deeper into holiness. And that is a process that we go through. But, you know, by the things that we do, and the attitude we take, that process can be quicker or slower. And, you know, and we can come to a place where, as it were, the veil of the flesh is rent in two. You know, when Jesus was crucified yeah. and there was an earthquake and the veil in the temple was rent in two and the separation between God and man was pushed aside. The veil of the flesh was rent in two. And that can become a distinctive experience for you. It's like when the fire falls from heaven upon the sacrifice which is on the altar. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, we should all be sacrifices on the altar. Um, but you know what? It's very easy to um, to uh, step down from the altar as well and then keep on stepping back and stepping down. So this is something that we need to, to start to understand about our commitment to the Lord. Because when the fire falls, and the veil is really rent. 
then it brings us to a higher spiritual plane, a spiritual level. And, you know, that there are two ways of looking at this. Positionally, we have sanctification. Positionally, we have it. In reality, we have it as well. So, for example, when we got born again, you know what? We become a new creation. Our spirit is a new creation. And that is the truth. It, it's a reality. But for many people, it's a positional reality because it's like it never becomes an experience as such. But you know what? We can come from the positional things in Christ, which we take by faith. And there's nothing wrong with that because we've got to start there. But we can come to a place where we start to experience things at a deeper level. Hallelujah. But you know what? These things require things like total surrender. Mm -hmm. We've got to give everything up to God. You know what? We've got a mind and a will and our emotions. We've got a soul. Those things have to be surrendered to God. Our thoughts have to be surrendered. Our will has to be surrendered. Our emotions have to be surrendered to him. And that takes a process of understanding and putting into action. Our body, it needs to become an instrument of righteousness. Where we've been using our body in our own ways, God wants us it to become an instrument of righteousness. He wants his life to become your life. You know, and that you would enter through the narrow gate. And it is a narrow gate. And this is how the apostles lived and how we could live if we were prepared to commit ourselves to it. So let's start off with a, a really good scripture. And it's Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. We've read this a few times, but you know what? It's an important scripture when we're looking at these type of things. So Paul says, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Now, this is one thing that we need to step up that level, to be strengthened in our spirit, in our spirit man, our inner man, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. This is something that we really need. It needs to be a revelation to us, and it needs to be an experience. It says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Well, I believe that he does, and we all have the faith to believe that Christ is in our heart. But there's a deeper thing in that too, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints. So this is not something that um, uh, is just for the odd few. It's mm -hmm. for every believer. It's available. Mm -hmm. with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ mm -hmm. which passes knowledge mm -hmm. you know what for me there are times when I feel the love of God and I have intimate times with the Lord and then it seems um, you know a week later that I've taken my eye off it and i've lost that experience but you know what there is a place where that love is continuous and it stays with you continuously and that you may be filled with all the fullness of god Hallelujah. now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think 
this experience, you know, is above everything that we could ask or think. It is uh, something that um, is difficult even to explain. Mm -hmm. But above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. It's mm -hmm. his power working Amen. in us. Mm -hmm. To him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations mm -hmm. forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Wow, well, you know, Paul knew. This high level of living with the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. And you know what? Like everything in life, you've got to have a target. Now, of course, unless you know that there is a target, um, you can't aim for it. But when you find out that there is a target, that you can aim for, you can start to aim for it. And you know what? With your bow and arrow, you might miss that target uh, quite a lot of times, but one day you will learn how to hit that target. Mm -hmm. And um, so I wanna give you a target today. I hope mm -hmm. that will help you to want to get to that place. So that the blessings that you receive, they're not just intermittent, but there's something that are permanent in you. Mm -hmm. uh, Philippians 3.12 says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, mm -hmm. but I press on mm -hmm. that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me mm. and why has he laid hold of you he wants you to become just like him Hallelujah. Mm. and that's what this is all about to become like him and we already are in many ways but you know what we want to we want to keep going forward and press mm. on mm. and you know even when we come to experience uh, this elevated level, which I'll talk about a bit later, because I have experienced it, uh, that is only the start. And there is pressing on even from there to, to, to go higher. Praise God. 1 John 4, 4, 17 says, as he is, so are we in this world. Thank you, Jesus. See, John came to that place. But as he is, that's in heaven. So are we in this world. Mm -hmm. We can really come to that level of being Christ-like. That's the target we're aiming for. Mm -hmm. Galatians 4.19 says, My little children, for whom I labor in birth again, he's laboring. He's laboring for his children until Christ is formed in you. Hallelujah. Until Christ is formed in you. He labors until Christ is formed in you. See, Jesus comes almost like a seed, but he can grow in you. But you know what? A seed needs to be in good soil, not rocky ground. Not strangled by thorns. Mm. No. It needs to be in good soil and it needs to be watered regularly mm. Mm. and then it will grow. Mm. So we need to continuously look at our lives and see, you know, well, how, am I am I doing the right things? Am I implementing the things that the Lord has said? Because he said, you know, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. Hallelujah. Mm. And 1 Colossians 128, and teach every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Perfect in Christ Jesus. You know, we can move on towards a, a 
perfection. Mm. And this is the end. I also uh, labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Mm. Wow. The power of God was working in him mightily, that he might bring people to that place where he was. Hallelujah. And you know what? We want the power of God to be working in us mightily. Mightily. And he wants to work into us mightily Amen. if we will allow him. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews 10, 14. For by one offering he has perfected those forever who are being sanctified. Yeah, so it says those who are being sanctified. It says not who are sanctified, but being sanctified. Yeah. So sanctification, as we said before, it's a process. Mm -hmm. It is a process. We go from stage to stage. But we've got to make sure that we're continuously going forward. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And you know, I said before, in order to, to reach this place, you need to give everything up. You've got to give everything up. But, you know, when you give everything to God, he gives you back so much more than you can ever imagine. As he said, abundantly more than you can even think. 1 Peter 5, 10 says, May the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory, by Christ Jesus, after you have, uh, and, says, and after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. It says after you have suffered a little while. You know what? There's a bit of suffering that needs to, we need to go through to get to this place. It's, it, it's not easy because it's giving up the things of the flesh, Amen. and sometimes. The Lord has to put us through situations that we can actually see what needs to be done that has to be surrendered to him. We get refined by fire. And sometimes, you know what? That is not comfortable. It's not comfortable. Okay. I think it'd be a good place to have another song. Yeah. Give us another good walking around. But we are unmuted now. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, the Lord. It's all about you. It's all about you. Oh, 2 Thessalonians 2.13. We have been chosen for salvation through sanctification. You know what? You don't hear many people in the church these days talking about holiness. And sanctification. You know, it seems like the church has turned their back on their thinking it's not something that's possible. But God said, you know what? Be holy because I am holy. Did he not? And he said that under the old covenant. So how much more is he saying it under the new covenant when his own spirit dwells within us? Hallelujah. And Hebrews 2.11 says both he who sanctifies that's jesus and those who are being sanctified that is us are all of one we're united with him in this and he is not ashamed to call them brethren he's not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters hallelujah Brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you, Jesus, that you would consider us brothers and sisters in Christ. But Lord, we really want to come to that place where we are truly as your brothers and sisters. And 2 Corinthians 7 1 talks about perfecting holiness. Holiness is something that can be perfected. Now we have holiness inside of us, 
because our spirit is sealed by the Holy Spirit. And our spirit was created in true righteousness and holiness. So that exists within us. But you know what? That spirit wants to be empowered within us so that we can walk in greater strength. Hallelujah. And that holiness can be perfected in us. And 1 John 2, 5, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. His love has been perfected in us. Wow. You know what? To know God's love is an amazing thing. It's the most beautiful thing that there is. And his love has been perfected in us. And by this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. This is what we want to be experiencing all of the time, to know that love and to live by that love. Now, I want to come back to our friend um, or one of our friends, uh, Andrew Murray, who wrote a wonderful book called uh, the Spirit of Christ, which I read a few years back. And something amazing happened because, again, this is one of those people that writes about moving in this higher level of spirituality. And it's like, uh, it was very lucky because at the time I had a lot of time on my hands. I was decorating um, uh, a house and you know what, I was on my own most of the time, so I could spend it with the Lord. And I spent most of it in prayer. And the Lord showed me that my soul was a bit like a garden. But you know what, that at that time, my garden was like a, a flaming jungle, you know. Uh, it had thorns and briars and rocks and, and things. And the Lord said, you need to clean this up. And I could understand it in spiritual terms. So I started to look at my life and to, to sort of dedicate the f and, and throw out the things that um, I felt and the, the Holy Spirit showed me were, were unworthy of the Lord. And uh, so, you know, I started looking at my life and saying, okay, that needs to go. I cast it into your fire, Lord. I cast it into your eternal fire. And slowly, uh, uh, over a fairly short period, my life got very cleaned up because I was able to really concentrate on the Lord and spend time with him. And then one day I woke up a different person. And basically what happened is over a period of about a month, the Lord gave me a taste of this higher level of spirituality he gave me a glimpse of what i believe is where he wants us to be even as normal christians because this is what he has provided for us and we can walk in it if we are prepared to commit ourselves to it and one of the first things was that I became aware, I became aware of being a new creation, not just um, understanding it by faith, but, but I became aware that I was a new creation in, in a different way. I can't really explain it, but I'll try and explain some of the things that changed in me. Um, so... It suddenly became that moment by moment throughout the whole day, 24 hours a day, I was continuously in the spirit of God. I was continuously walking in the spirit. And this is for a month. I was continually intimately abiding with Jesus and the Father, all day. 
and it was like I was the scripture talks about it, it, it was like I was hidden in him I, I I knew I was hidden in him that that he was in control of everything we know that scripture that says uh, that, that Paul says in Galatians 2 20 I have been crucified with Christ but it's no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me that became an experience it was like well Christ had taken over in his power and I was sort of on the back seat but it was the most precious and awesome and wonderful place to be to be hidden in him to be hidden in him to be fully trusting in him to be not anxious about anything because he took control and he could do anything and paul said and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by faith in the son of god who loves me and has uh, and gave his life for me Hallelujah. <clears throat> and i've got to say you know the scripture tells us that we should capture every thought and um that can be uh um something that well that we try to do in our own strength um but when I was in this elevated place, I was able to take every thought captive and it was easy and natural, no effort at all. And it was like every word that I spoke was considered. And it's not like I took five minutes to say a word, but I was only saying things that were from him. And they were perfect type of words. And the fruit of the spirit, you know, the love and the joy and the peace. Well, yes, I, I lived in that. Hallelujah. And I can live in that today as well, sometimes. But this was a continuous thing. And the things like the patience, the self-control, the kindness and the gentleness, the faithfulness, all those other things, again, were just effort, effortless and effortless part of this spiritual experience. You know, any time that I was insulted or mocked, you know, today, at the moment, I deal with those things and I say, right, I'm not going to rise to that. In the name of Jesus, I forgive that person. I pray for them. And you know what? I, I sort of do it in my own strength. But in, in this case, it was like those insults and that mocking and whatever it might be that someone would say negative to me was absorbed by Jesus. It was just absorbed by him. He took it away. It didn't affect me one iota. I didn't even have to think about it. And for those that mocked or might insult me or say negative things, you know, all I wanted to do was to intercede for them. My heart was just to intercede for them because I had such a love for people that I only wanted to be an instrument of grace. And, um, and, and so prayer was continuous and continual all throughout the day 24 hours even when i was asleep i was aware of being in prayer and it wasn't like i've got to think about it it just flowed it just flowed praise god and there was power in that prayer and there was real faith of knowing that the things that i prayed for would actually come to pass a certainty a knowing wow and you know what with this experience it was always living in the present 
I never had any thought for the past. I never had any thought for the future. I didn't need to because the present, the present was filled with God. It was all about God. And I didn't want anything more than just to be in his presence and to do his will. And, you know, that's what faith is all about. Faith is all about now. Faith is all about now. And we know that the Lord is with us now. We know his spirit is in us. We know that he is with us. We've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. We've been soaked in him. So we have to live in the now. And it's very easy, you know, in the normal life to live in the past and the future. We think about those things and we, we, we chew on those things in the past. Or we think about things in the future, which just makes us anxious. But when we live in the present with God, you don't be anxious for anything. Hallelujah. The only thing you desire is to do God's will. And normal life, the things that we get involved in, the things like watching your favorite TV program or watching sports, watching Manchester United, You've been there. I used to watch rugby and golf and I was a sports nut. You know what? I had no interest. No interest in those things because God was my sufficiency. Oh, Lord, I want to come back to that place. I want to come back to that place, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Knowing the love of God. Yes, the length and the depth and the height. Wow, you can know that love. And that love is just so abundantly greater than what you might have experienced intermittently now. It's just it, 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 on steroids. Can I say God's love on steroids? Beautiful. And it's like I was connected with heaven continuously connected with heaven continuously without effort i didn't have to think about it i was just connected and we talk about having the mind of christ and people say well we have the mind of christ i had the mind of christ and you know what i knew all things now that sounds like some sort of boast but it's not my boast. I knew all things, but in a, I can't explain it, but it's like in an intuitive way. I knew them deep down in the spirit that I knew all things and everything. Actually, all things are Christ. But you know that you know that you know that you know all things. <laughs> it's a strange thing to try and explain to people. But we say we've got the mind of Christ. But, you know, I really had that mind. And walking in the perfect love. Yeah, I talked about that a little bit before. He is perfect love. And all this is not about, uh, you know, I'm talking about manifestations here, what it was like. But you know what? All these things are Christ. Christ and his attributes are not separated. They are all one in him. Hallelujah. And I became one in him. And he is love. He is love. Anxious for nothing. Total trust in God. No fear of death. No fear of doing his will. And you know what? I became a living sacrifice. But the thing about a living sacrifice is that the sacrifice has to stay on the altar. <laughs> and you know what? A strange thing happened after that month. I got a terrible, terrible dose of flu. And I was in bed for two weeks. And it was a 
terrible thing. It was really bad flu. Couldn't do anything. And uh, anyway, after that two weeks, it's like um, that experience had gone. That glimpse of that spiritual life, that, um, that taste of it had disappeared. And, um, but I know that I received that experience to be able to tell people about it so that there's a target that they can aim for above what they already know at the moment. And also, it's, uh, for me, it is an incentive to keep on growing and to keep walking that path through the narrow gate that this becomes a reality in my life again, that I can live on that higher plane. Hallelujah. So um, this is the little book that I'm talking about. This edition was 1968. It's in three volumes. I tell you what, if you want it, you can get it on Amazon. It's cheap. And it will take you step by step on this path by this man who lived that life. And I tell you what, it's step by step. It's explained in depth. It is a beautiful thing to have. It takes a bit of reading, but it's worth it. It really is. And you know what? I'm going to use some of his material to teach on future messages because it is so good. So, um, yeah, so it's all about step by step moving towards that place that we've been called to. And, um, and I hope this has inspired you today. You know, it was a very personal experience that I went through. But it's not something that we cannot find ourselves if we are committed to God and prepared to give up everything, that he might give everything to us. Because I experience that everything, and it is so much greater than I can explain. I've tried to explain it, but it all comes with the emotion of it as well. Now, you know what? We're told not to live by feeling, but to live by faith, which is very true. But... Also, knowing that love of God and walking in it is an incredible thing. And um, the people that I'm talking about, people like Watchman Nee and Smith Wigglesworth, that's the life they lived. All the apostles, Peter and John and Paul, all those guys lived that life. They're calling us to it as Jesus is. So there we are, my friends. I think it's time for some music and maybe afterwards we can have a little discussion and we can pray for some people and just praise and worship the Lord. Amen. <laughs>